everyone, Mr. Neighbor here, and we're talking about Newton's laws of motion. So first, Newton's first law of motion. An object in motion will stay in motion, or an object in rest will stay at rest unless acted on by an outside force. Another way of putting it is that every body continues its state of rest or uniform speed in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by a net external force acting on it. So this tendency is to maintain your state of motion. So it's called inertia. Whatever you are doing, you want to stay doing that. If you're at rest, you want to stay at rest. If you're in motion, you want to stay in motion. So a lot of times Newton's first law is called the law of inertia. When we talk about this first law, you need to be able to describe the following phrases at rest, constant speed in a straight line and what net force is. So when we talk about at rest, we're talking about not moving zero meters per second. You are stationary. If we're talking about constant speed, we're talking about going at the same miles per hour meters per second. It's not accelerating at all in a straight line. I hope, I hope you know what that means. You're not taking a turn at all, straight, up, down, left, right. That's okay, but it can't change from whatever it started. And net force means the sum of all the forces acting on it. So if there is a net force, the forces are not canceling each other out. One force is stronger than another. Okay, so net force means there is a force that is stronger than the rest. There is a force that's stronger than the rest. All right, Newton's second law of motion, one, probably one of the most um, famous equations in the world, F equals MA. So I should be a little bit more specific with this. This is a vector quantity, and that's because of the acceleration. And the acceleration we're using is the average acceleration. So the force is calculated by the mass of an object times its average acceleration. Um, so it's probably going to be one of the most important things you learn all year is that if you have a force, it causes that mass to accelerate, not just have a velocity, but have a changing velocity. Remember acceleration, your velocity is changing. All right. So let's do a few practice problems. Force equals mass times average acceleration. So remember that when we talk about all these problems. A net force of 60 newtons causes the 15 kilogram girl to accelerate down the slide. What is her acceleration? So we have a net force right here of 60 newtons. That is equal to the mass of the girl times your average acceleration. So to find acceleration, we'll divide the 15 over, which will give us out an answer of four meters per second squared. And that's equal to average acceleration. Um, there is one significant figure here. There is two here. So when I divide them, I should have an answer of only one. If the force is applied over three seconds, what is her velocity at the bottom of the slide? Now we need to bring back our kinematic equations from motion or simply just think about this. We are having a little girl at rest go down a slide. So at zero seconds, she is traveling at zero meters per second. At one second, she is traveling four meters per second. At two seconds, she is traveling another four meters per second added on to that, which is eight. At three seconds, another four, which is 12. And after that, again, another four, which is 16. So if she's going down this slide for three seconds and there's no friction whatsoever, then she's going to be traveling 16 meters per second at the bottom of the slide. If you wanted to use a kinematic equation, I would probably suggest this one right here. Our initial velocity is zero. Zero. Our acceleration is four. And our time 
is three. Oop, I did this wrong. I did one extra. It should be 12. Um, so four times three is 12. So there you get out your final velocity just the same, same way. Another practice problem. A net force is applied to a 0 0.150 kilogram baseball, causing it to accelerate at 1,000 meters per second squared. How big a force was applied? So force is calculated by mass, 0 0.150 times 1,000. So when we multiply that together, that is the tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So we are going to get out an answer of 150. So this force right here that the bat is applying to the ball is 150 newtons. That is the force applied. You even can see the deformation of the ball right there that we talked about um, in a previous video. Just because there's no motion when a force happens, um, at times, this one does have a motion, obviously, um, but whenever there is a force, there's always a deformation. Uh, if the ball was traveling toward the batter at 40 meters per second and was hit for 0.1 seconds, what was its velocity after the hit? Let's find how much the velocity changed in that 0.1 seconds. So to calculate velocity, it's acceleration times time. So you can think about the equation of V equals VI uh, plus AT, if you want to think about it like that. So the initial velocity, it says 40 meters per second. Um, we're not going to use that right here, though. Well, I guess we could. Um, I'm going to define a motion, a direction for our motion, though. I'm going to say our direction in the positive X direction is to the right. So the ball, it was coming toward us. Uh, in the leftward direction. So that means I have to write this as negative 40 meters per second. Plus my acceleration, which is 1,000, and that's being applied by the bat. So that's going to be positive to the right. And then I have to do that times time, a very tiny time, 0.1 seconds. So this is negative 40. This will be positive 100. And when I go ahead and add those together, I will get out positive 60 meters per second. Uh, and that would be the correct sig figs. Notice that the positive means I have a velocity in this direction, which makes sense because the ball is going to fly that direction. All right, so we've talked about free body diagrams already. Uh, we're just going to do a little bit of a recap now. So we want to draw a free body diagram for each of these situations regarding a skydiver jumping from a hovering helicopter. So first we have a skydiver as they are released. So they're in the air, they're jumping out. Their free body diagram, that is just the force due to gravity. Okay. A little later, he still only has the force due to gravity acting on him. Maybe you want to say, oh, isn't there any air, air resistance? Um, yeah, there is a little bit, and maybe I should put that on there. So these little ones right here, we're going to call those F air. Later still, we still have the force of gravity acting, and then air resistance is getting very, very large at this point. It's getting close to the magnitude of gravity. Until we hit terminal velocity, at that point, the, velocity, the force of gravity is the same as the force of um, the air resistance, and we are not going to speed up anymore. When the chute opens, our um, air resistance is going to get very, very big, and it's going to slow us down. So air resistance is going to get big. Our force of gravity, that arrow should not change ever. It's always going to be the same force. Then eventually, our... Air resistance is going to slow us down till we reach a new terminal velocity. So the air resistance is going to get less. And then we'll have Fg is equal to F air again. 
then we're hitting the ground. So normal force is bigger than the gravitational force. And then once we're standing on the ground, the normal force is equal to the